Thank you, Alice, for the very kind and generous introduction. I actually thought that she was introducing another speaker. <laughs> well, His Excellency Olafo Ratner Grimson and uh, the two very distinguished moderators, Mr. Frederick Paulson and Ms. Alice Rogoff, and Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. For those who know me would notice that I always wear a pair of Sami sealskin boots when attending Arctic conferences. But this year, I decided to wear a pair of normal business shoes, as you can see. <laughs> Why, you may ask? Why the change? Because Arctic is warming up so much these days that there's no need to wear a pair of heavy-duty and heavy boots just to protect my feet. While this makes traveling light, it does raise a very heavy concern that something is not quite right in the Arctic. And that's why we have such an assembly of people, experts and all that, gathering from all over the world in this premise to share, in this premises to share your expert views and thoughts. I, it has been only four years since I last attended the Arctic Circle Assembly. But many things have happened and many changes have taken place in this very short four years. For example, there is an unprecedented decline of the Arctic sea ice, where the summer of 2018 recording some 1.63 million square kilometers less of ice cover as compared to the annual average in the last 40 years. And increasingly, volatile weather patterns, including forest fires within the Arctic Circle. Imagine forest fires within the Arctic Circle. And also record numbers of super typhoons and tornadoes across the Atlantic. I think the Mother Nature is trying to tell us that there is greater urgency to tackle climate change and related issues before it is too late. And there's no better place on Earth to do this than in the Arctic. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Arctic sustainability requires international involvement and commitment and the robust Arctic Council is therefore very vital. However, we, act, we have to recognize that Arctic Council cannot do everything by itself. It needs like-minded partners to come forward to support. And therefore, it is important for international forums such as the Arctic Circle Assembly to complement the Arctic Council's work. And this ACA is like a big lavu, which is a traditional Sami tent, bringing key stakeholders together under one roof. Singapore is privileged to be an Arctic observer since 2013. After speaking at many Arctic forums and platforms in the last six years, I believe that many of you now understand our concern and how Singapore can contribute to the Arctic sustainability efforts. So this morning, I would like to take this opportunity to give an update on our recent work on ocean sustainability, and more importantly, raising awareness about the Arctic in the Southeast Asia region, where my country is located. While new sea routes present opportunities, it also raises issues such as maritime governance and safety. To draw focus to these issues, the National University of Singapore's Center for International Law co-launched a book titled Governance of the Arctic Shipping with the Uni Universities of Tromso's Jackson Center for the Law of the Sea at the 2018 Arctic Frontiers Conference 
held in Tromso, of course. By the same token, increased shipping activities will also impact the environment, and it is therefore very crucial to understand its implications. To this end, we partner Norway for an Asia-Europe meeting or ASEM conference on green shipping in Singapore in April this year. Our interest in biodiversity conservation also goes above the sea and into the air. Some, some of you may be interested to know that about 30 species of Arctic migratory birds make their annual winter holiday visits to Singapore. And they visit Singapore's Sungai Bolo Wetland Reserve. And we have hosted the conservation of Arctic flora and fauna coordinator in this wetland since the middle of this year. And his job is to assist with conservation efforts along the East Asia, Australasia flyway. And we pay particular attention to the, conserva to the conservation of the crucially, crucially endangered spoonbill sandpiper. They are so vulnerable that my colleagues actually call them the panda of the North. So given the far-reaching causes and consequences of warming Arctic, we have also sought to raise the awareness of the Arctic issues around Southeast Asia through organizing events such as the Arctic Circle Forum in 2015 and also Arctic Frontiers Abroad Forum in 2017. Both were the first of its kinds in Asia. And looking ahead, I am very happy to note that Singapore's young people are also taking greater interest in the Arctic. A Singapore University student attended a 16-day expedition in July 2018 in the northern part of Canada. While another university student, Gina Go, spoke at the Arctic Circle Assembly last year in the same buildings. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we only have one Arctic, and whatever happens in the Arctic does not stay in the Arctic, as we always say. And the same is true that whatever outside the Arctic doesn't stay outside the Arctic. So all of us are the stakeholders, and collectively, we can do something to prevent the Arctic from melting away. So by doing our small little part to raise awareness of the challenges confronting the Arctic, Singapore hopes to be able to create hot discussions on protecting the Arctic so that all of us here in this hall can do something to make Arctic cool again. So on this note, thank you very much for your attention.